helium and hydrogen and uh, electron shields, valence. Well, if you've read a bit about star drive, you know this is a nucleon like you have never seen before, like no one, nobody knows. CERN doesn't know, NASA doesn't know, Einstein, Newton, they're all idiots compared to me. Well, this one's a single quark. It, when it turns around, is a photon, okay, when it spins. This is a meson, two quarks. Come on, just a little demonstration how weak a meson is. But if you have three of those together, like this, this, they all, they lose, you know, but they all uh, lock each other. The blue one locks the, 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 the yellow and the red one, the red one locks the blue and the yellow one, and the yellow one locks the red and the blue one. So this is a nucleus as created in the black hole pressure cooker. Well, two of those make hydrogen, and that happens in the black hole pressure cooker. Four of those make for helium, for nucleons. Two of them stick out a little, and that's your electron. It's not orbiting, it's really attached to the core. A um, few simple pictures, black hole. You got uh, loose gravitons, yeah, loose gravitons. We have the quarks. They moved all together in a step, uh, stop motion manner, uh, hello, <laughs> stop motion manner. Um, like the cradle of Newton, that's how they... It's not gravitation, it's semi-gravitation. The meson weak, of course, as I just demonstrated. Then there are the most abundant ones coming out of the black hole are the hydrogens. Of course, quarks and loose gravitons also come out of it, but these ones we focus on right now, the nucleons, because they have actual gravity. Let's see what's there. All right, we also call this one a hydrogen atom or a proton, depending on its exact shape. Proton, one sticking out a little, neutron, all tied together. So, you got the black hole pressure cooker, these come out, and they stack in the sun or stars like this. It's the most uh, efficient way to stack them in a, in a small place, in, in a small uh, volume. So they stack like this, and then they fuse. And you can see two fusing, three fusing, four fusing, right? Four, three, two nucleons fusing. Well, what happens is they get, a sp get spun by the, the ether. Yes, the ether does exist. It spins them around. Um, I have explained in how gravity works, why this happens, why it keeps its spin rotating in one way. Um, when it does so, the force forces these two outer ones out. It's a very uh, narrow margin. Um, as you know, because of a nucleon decay, a nucleon decays, no, I'm sorry, a neutron decay, neutron decays into a proton, and that takes about 15 minutes. So th this doesn't go like pop, no, it takes some time to do so. And these are just not fast enough or aligned in the right way to pop out. So this is your helium core, two electrons. This is actually for helium, including the electrons, including the core. Hydrogen, two of them spinning around, two of them popping out. There you go. These ones are not aligned very good and are a bit close to the middle. So you see it's a very delicate balance between being a neutron, uh, ne neutron or a proton. Well, the third, three of them, these are not even on. The map, this, this map, I mean, this map made by an idiot for idiots. You can use it in chemistry, but it's totally useless when it comes to quantum mechanics. Because this one is not on it. It only becomes on it when it has one electron sticking out, making it three hydrogen, and when two stick out, it suddenly becomes helium. So, again, stupid. Smart. Well, so you got your helium, and you got your hydrogen, and both are fully dreadlocked. These individual um, nucleons cannot turn. They're all stuck together, but they can they turn as a whole, which makes a helium crawl out of a, a glass, if you want to. Liquid helium can crawl out of a glass because of the power of the stars. Helium is the smallest propulsion motion machine ever. Um, right, and then we got a normal atom. 
this is a normal atom and as you can see as i will demonstrate these can turn freely so the structure the crystal structure remains stationary and these one once turn around and they provide the force of gravity of course but also uh, some can uh, expand and some cannot um, Pauli says look at it from the top and if the first goes clockwise this one goes clockwise they uh, mesh inter interlink like cogs so this one has to go anti-clockwise this one has to go come here you fucker this one has to go clockwise again so if this one goes clockwise clockwise anti-clockwise you cannot have two one going clockwise next to each other because then they will uh, collide because this one will go move out and this one wants to move in so they collide so that you cannot have that so these one are forced to remain uh, no neutrons right they remain neutrons on the bottom side however they they you can all expand into protons because it's they stretch out into protons because they can all turn let's see oh I'll go again they can all turn inside 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 all three together so lithium uh, this is six lithium Lithium-6 has three protons, and they are on the bottom side. Now, that's a simple uh, um, introduction to how a nuclear really looks like. Again, nobody else on this planet knows it but me. Strange is it. Well, it's just a simple mechanism, and they don't... They're clueless. Sun is clueless. This one represents the hydrogen, and this one represents the helium. Every Q-tip is uh, one nucleon. And this is how they are forced together in the, in the sun or in the black hole. Now, uh, I had a few interesting uh, isotopes here. This one is the most interesting of them all. It's fully docked. Um, it means it, uh, it's maximized. If you take a nucleon like this, you notice there are one, two, three, four places where another one can dock. And docking means like this, the four places each side. So this one is fully docked and has three in the center. So when it comes out of your uh, black hole or out of your planet or whatever, or sun, it goes like this, stretching out. This one, uh, loose quarks will stick resulting in this thing now the next one not show you is this one and this one the yellows are the inner shield and of course in the very middle is the first shield two it represents those two but it's not a real it's a different uh, isotope but it, the two red ones represent the inner shield two electrons then you get these uh, yellows and there's those are 12 but because of Pauli uh, four of them cannot turn. Nature wants to change as many neutrons into protons as possible. But uh, such is not possible always because of Pauli. So you have to flag a few down. They cannot expand because the other ones are expanded. And maximum expansion, this is the maximum number of protons in the second shield, and that's eight. Now the third shield, you can already see those two. They are part of the third shield, as those two on top, on bottom one, top one. And you can see these blue ones. This is, the blue ones are representing the third shield. And after flagging them then down, you will notice that top there are six, bottom six, protons. Two times six is uh, 12. No, I'm lying. Wait a second. It's, it's one, two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2 times 8, 2 times 8 protons makes 16, 1 on top, 1 on bottom makes 18, of 18 valence. And as you can see, you can see how they are um, aligned, and you can also see, let me take a little a ruler for that, this one's a bigger one, uh, glue, glue, ruler, 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 
There you go. You see the yellow one? That's the, an inner shield. And if I put the ruler on top, you see, it shields the inner shield. It, these protons circling, or the quarks circling these members, are protecting the inner shields. So, even if it has valence, like here, the, the yellow one is not flag, it has valence. Still, even with valence, it, it gets shielded off. And when it becomes bigger, a nucleus, uh, um, an atom core, you will note that this is a bit more shallow. So sometimes there's valence with this uh, red shield, although the yellow shield is already on top, already completed. Let's see, one is the red, two is the blue, then you got three, no, two is the yellow, then you got the three, fourth, fifth shield. Is that the fifth shield? I reckon so. Red, one, two, three, four, five. Look at the five shield. Hmm. Five. Okay. Well, let's go back. Just a small example. 18 valence, right? So we start out with two valence, the gridlock ones. Then you got your eight valence, you got the 18 valence, and then you got these ones. This is the um, second shield, third shield, fourth shield is the red one. Fourth shield. And after flagging the red one, you will end up with um, one, two, three times four is twelve, and twelve on the other side. The flagged ones are the neutrons again, and the non-flagged ones are the protons. They are to remain protons, as many protons as possible, of course, because nature wants to make them all turn. That's uh, nature. It's called the ether, but okay, the ether wants to have them all turned. And so you got here your. your uh, they say four, four shield, four shield, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, three, is 12, 12, and then the middle ones, this is one, and on the other side, times four, eight, two times 12 and eight makes 24, and eight makes 32 valence. Next one should be 50. Well, I flagged the thing, I checked it out, and it was 44, but then I noted, noticed this one. Um, where is that piece of paper I had? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I can show you without it. Um, fuck it. I can show you without it. Um, there is, oh wait, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Take A, nucleon like this. Right, nucleon, a complete one. It's a bit bigger, but it fits right here. You see, it fits. It's one. It's a bit oversized, but that fits one nucleon fits in each hole, and those holes there are six of those. So you got uh, 44 valence plus six makes 50 valence. So this is the fifth shield, fifth shield, 50 valence again, eight, 18, 32, 50 valence. This one will probably be uh, 72, and the other will probably be, watch it, 98, well. So that's how the, uh, the shields are aligned in every uh, atom core. And nobody knows this because they don't think uh, I'm, uh, I'm smart enough to do so. But I, I'm smart enough. And you can do this too. You can get some Q-tips and get some glue and some paint and some, some, some cell tape to flag them. You can create your own uh, atoms and isotopes. No big deal. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.